We would stand for the call to worship. God's steadfast love endures forever. We watch for God and like those who eagerly await the morning. Hear God's helpful word like those who long for pardon. Sing praise to God and rejoice in his love. Amen. Let us unite our voices in the opening prayer. Loving God, we are yours. We come as we are with our cares and concerns. We long to touch you and find healing in your embrace. Strengthen our faith and heal our brokenness, that we may wish for you in joy. Amen. Let's once again unite our voices in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From death he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our prayer hymn is in the garden number 314 in your hymn.
Let's start with joys. Do we have any joys this morning? Thursday, Rose gave me a telephone call. Wow. And wow. It, it just got me so excited. Yeah. Uh, she sounds great. Uh, sometimes she can't think of the word. And sometimes her sentence kind of stays. But she sounded like her old self. And she's in pretty good spirit. She, she has days when she sits and cries. Um, her walking, she needs more help with her walking with the steps. Uh, but other than that, she's, for what she went through, she's doing it marvelous. Thank God. And she's still in her car? Yes, yeah. Because her house is high level and she can see those steps. So she's still in uh, her sick. Which is good because Tip is a nurse. Mm -hmm.
this amazing week, they grew closer to God, and then they go back home, and they don't always have that that person to get them to church, that person to get them to church. Not only last week, but all the camps, you, you just have an amazing time, and you get so close to God, and then you go back to real life, and you don't have any support. It's hard to keep that fire going, so they need uh, all the youth in any camp needs these prayers. So. Is that all we have? ask that you were present with us and, and allow the service to be able to make a difference in our hearts. We thank you for the beautiful day that we're having in the breeze, uh, relief from the heat and humidity. And we just uh, we just thank you for one more day with Aaron and our moms. Uh, we, uh, we thank you that Rose is doing, doing well. so happy um, that she is making so much progress and we ask you to continue to be with her uh, on those bad days. Um, help her to realize that uh, we are still praying for her and that you are with her through those, those bad days and just to help her uh, Lord, we, I thank you for the week of camp that I had um, for the lack of, of heat keeping everyone safe and allowing your spirit to be um, there on site. We know that you are everywhere, but uh, the fact that you, you've touched so many different kids this week, we just ask you to continue to, to remind them that you are with them and that, that you will never leave them, uh, regardless of what kind of situation they go back to at home. Uh, we ask you to be with Annette and uh, we continue to be with her. Uh, be with Dara's brother in law who is back in the hospital. Uh, we ask you to be with um, Priscilla as her, uh, her husband passed away. Be with Kate uh, and her family with her mother who had a stroke but is doing better. We ask you to be with Pastor Pete um, as he has surgery. Uh, Lord, he has touched so many different lives, um, including, including mine. Uh, we ask you to just, um, just wrap him up as he has surgery and to, uh, to help everything go smoothly and, and to let the therapy go all afterwards. Uh, we ask uh, for you to continue to be with Kay, uh, let her continue to heal. Um, and, and just just get better each day. Uh, we ask you to be with um, Helen's brother, Ray. Um, Lord, we, we all know that losing people stirs up all kinds of emotions, and we just ask you to be with him as he's dealing with those. And we, we ask you to be with Helen's goddaughter. Uh, allow her safe pregnancy to be able to carry it completely through it um, and to just, uh, just to both the mom and in the future um, baby to be healthy uh, over these next few months. Uh, Lord, I ask you to be with those that are here this morning. I ask you to be with our church and allow us to be able to find ways to, to spread your word and your love us be able to think out of the box and to just uh, just 
trust in you and the future of, uh, of us being disciples for you. Lord, we, uh, we just thank you so much for your love and your mercy you've given to us in today. Let us join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven. Join us in singing hymn uh, 707, Hymn of Promise. So I wanted to start off uh, with the scripture, and I hope that uh, you'll see how everything ties in together. The 
But this, uh, this is part of the scripture from Mark. Um, let's see, Mark 5, uh, we, we're starting in uh, verse 25. A woman was there who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a lot under the care of many doctors and had spent everything she had without getting any better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Because she had heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. She was thinking, if I can touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Her bleeding stopped immediately and she sensed in her body that her illness had been healed. So, have you ever been in a, in a, in a position to where all you would like to do is just just touch Jesus for, for a minute. To, you know, you're going through a horrible time or maybe a loss or an illness and you're like, if I could just reach out and touch Jesus, that would ease what I'm going through. Sometimes it just takes a touch to change a life. I want to tell you a little bit about some things that happened at camp that I think, I hope that you uh, you enjoy. So, uh, so first thing I, I wanted to wanted to tell you about was a young man. His name was Dominic, and um, we were going through introductions, and they were going around and they were saying names. You know, I'm I'm so and so. I'm from here. And I don't even remember how it went. I don't know if I said I'm Bill, I'm a pastor from, you know, from, from Northwest Indiana. But at some point he said, I'm just going to call you Gramps. <laughs> so, uh, so he did it for the whole week. He, he called me Gramps. And, and I teased him and I'm like, well, I'm just going to call you Grandpa. So it was an ongoing joke. But by Thursday, when we all get to the point where we know that this, this amazing week is going to end, you can see how some kids kind of pull away because they don't want to go home because they had such an amazing week. And he would come up to me every once in a while and he would just stand next to me. And I, I knew what he wanted. He wanted a hug. So I would put my arm around him and I'd give him a hug and I, you know, and he initiated, this is, this is the cool part about how, how camp can work. One of the times he gave me a hug, he started the conversation by saying, I'm going to miss you, Gramps. And I said, well, I'm going to miss you too. The connections that we make during those mountaintop experiences are things that we remember forever. And then we have Darla. She was on staff this year. Darla was a student that I had when I started counseling at Edward. And she got up and she told her story uh, to the kids and she said, I used to come to camp and think, when I go home, my life is going to change. And she would go home, everything would go back to normal, and she started doing the things that she shouldn't have done. And the what, what got her turned around was she got caught by her parents. Whatever it was, she didn't go into details, but she got caught. And they grounded her. She said, I pretty much got grounded for the rest of my life. And she said, I got bored and I started reading the Bible. And I still had one more year of camp to go. So when I went for the first time ever, when I said, well, when I get back home, things are going to change, she meant it. She was on a mission trip last year. 
She's going to school to be a youth minister. And this is from a kid that I was able to see grow. I remember Darla, I think, before she remembered me because Does anybody know what it means when you tell when you say something when you say that guy can ball? They're good at basketball. She was whipping the boys in basketball when she was in camp. She was good, and she was a jokester. There's there's one time actually when when I saw her this past week, I said let me tell you a story because I'm not sure if I'm. It's been a while, I want to make sure that this is you. And I said, do you remember, I said, I, I had a camper, we were in the cafeteria, and she walked up to this, uh, this guy, and she said, my pudding smells weird. Does yours? And he said, well, I don't know. And, and he went like this to smell it, and she pushed his head into the pudding. And she laughed and she goes, yeah, that, that's me. So we had that connection. So she is, she is now going into a ministry position for you. See, all it took was, it took a huge thing by getting caught by her parents to make her focus on what she was doing and then she went to camp and she experienced God and that changed her life. And the last story I want to share with you is during commitment night, we, I had a young man come up to me and he says, can I, can I talk to you out in the, in the, uh, in the entrance of the auditorium? So we went out and I sat down and he went on to tell me that he lost his mom not too long ago and that that he felt like he was disappointing her by not going to church and by some of the things that he was doing. So we, we started talking and I told him, I said, well, I know how hard it can be. Everybody is different, but I lost my mom when I was 13 or my dad when I was 13. And I said, it's a loss that never really goes away. So we, we talked for a while and then another counselor came in with the boy that that uh, he was talking to out on, uh, on, on right outside the auditorium. So I said, "Would you mind praying with us?" And she, he said, "Well, you know, I would. Why don't we include Nathan in this too?" So I found out that Nathan also lost a parent recently, and that's what he was dealing with. So I asked Parker, the other counselor, I said, would you pray for us? So we sat there and we all had our arms around each other. And, and as Parker is praying, he goes, we all know that losing a parent sucks. So we close in prayer and we, uh, the boys kind of you know, get themselves together and they go back into worship. And I looked at Parker, who is the, the other counselor, and I said, I have to ask, did you lose a parent? And he said, yeah. And I said, do you realize that God put four people in this space together, all that lost parents, all to be together, pray together, to talk about it, and to understand each other's prayer and their pain? I didn't know what they were talking about outside. But the fact that all four of us had lost a parent and we all were relating to the same pain as we prayed, that is a God thing. All it took was a touch of Jesus to make a difference. But here is the thing. We have the mountaintop experiences, but what then? What happens next? 
For me, every time I go to camp, it's a mountaintop experience. And then I come back, and things are different. They're normal. And, and the sad part is, through my time at camp, I still hear the same stories that I heard when I first started going. The kids say, I want my church to be different, but they don't listen to me. I want to hear different songs. I want a different style of worship available. But the churches are still not hearing that. So we kind of set these students up for, to fail because they're coming off their mountaintop experience and they've, and they've heard God and they felt God. And then we send them home to nothing. And I think this is where we have to ask ourselves is, is if we had a youth walk through those doors, what do we have to offer? Because we all know that Sunday service is an amazing thing and we all feel closer to God. But it's never going to equal the mountaintop experience. Some people's mountaintop experience might be the Emmaus walk. I think a couple of you have done that, right? So you go there, you, you spend time with God, you get so close and you're so on fire and you can feel the spirit. What do you do with it? How do you keep it going? So here's, here's the thing. The next scripture I'm going to share with you challenges us. It's in James. Uh, James chapter 1. Uh, this starts in verse 22. You must be doers of the word. And not only hearers who mislead themselves. Those who hear but, do, but don't do the word are like those who look at the, their faces in a mirror. They look at themselves and walk away and immediately forget what they were like. But there are those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. They don't listen and then forget but they put it into practice in their lives. They will be blessed in whatever they do. See, our, our job is to, to not just come to church. Our, God is, our, our job is to, to take what we hear and what we feel and to share that with others. Now, nothing will compare to the man's walk or camp anything on that level. But we have to do more than just hear the word and then go back to our normal life. We have to allow the word to change us, to change our hearts. And sometimes that's difficult. Because that means it's taking us outside of our comfort zone. I'll be the first one to admit when I go to camp, I see certain kids and I think, <laughs> they are going to be a challenge. I can tell by the way they walk and they talk. And most of the time, I'm wrong. Because I'm prejudging them on, on what I think they are. And after the first worship, when they feel God, they might have that same walk, that same talk. But they're different people. So my question to all of us is we all, most of us, all of us I hope have had that mountaintop experience. Do we remember what it was like to be that on fire for God? And to be able to use that we leave here. I used a, an example once of a flashlight. You take one battery out, 
the light doesn't come on. And sometimes that battery, even though there's two, the battery dies and the light gets blue, uh, gets dim. How do we make it bright again? We have to have new batteries. We have to have something fully charged to be able to project that light out and flash out. We have to go through a, a renewal period, I think. The Methodist Church is doing it, and I think many churches need to re-examine themselves and, and ask themselves, are we just doing church? Or are we putting the word in practice? And that is the question that we all have to ask ourselves. And sometimes the answer is not what we want to hear. But we have to ask it. We have to ask it because we are called to share God's love. We hear it in the Great Commission. Go out and make disciples of the world. It doesn't say come to church on Sunday. It says go out and make disciples. So as we leave here today, just think to yourself, try to remember, where were you the most highest and closest to God, and how can we get that fire back to where we can't keep it to ourselves? I want to close with one question. Who, who here has went to Emmaus? When you came home, did you tell anybody about it? They stood outside singing all those songs that we sang for a week. That it was just, uh, how do I say, it just in me. I mean, I kind of looked like an idiot standing up there singing, but I did it. <laughs> that's what the Spirit does sometimes. And that's what we have to remember the power of God. You get back to the scripture of Mark, and sometimes all we need is just a little touch of Jesus, and it can reignite that fire that we had in those moments where we were so high on the mountain top. The experiences I shared with you from camp are things that I, I will never And that's what we have to try to keep going back to is I know the Holy Spirit can work amazing ways because I felt it, I've experienced it. So how do we how do we understand that now, many years later, when we're when we're just going to church? How can we revisit that fire? That is what I want us to think about when we leave here. So the words for of assurance this morning, there is forgiveness and healing with God. God's steadfast love has the power to redeem our brokenness and make us whole. Let us all strive to reach out just for one touch of Jesus be able to reignite the fire that we had in our hearts at one point. Amen. If you would stand as you're able and join us in hymn 657.
Let us all long for that touch, and let us all hear the word and be able to 